Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the boss is back. Actually, it's here for the very first time. The gasser is complete. And before we get started with today's boat tour, I've had requests for more dog. There's Jackson Brown. He's exhausted. He uh, did a lot of the work, and so he's taking a break. All right, boat tour. Here's the gasser. The boss is back. This, because the boat is the Stroh Light, and it says the boss is back on the back of the Stroh Light, but they repainted the boat, refitted a different cowling, and changed it into the Infinity Car Audio, which this now is, theoretically. Let me see if I can set this thing down one-handed. How do I do this? And I'm still, I'm going to try to video it at the same time so you can watch me suffer. There we go. Okay, in the boat, we have a quick draw, 30.5. This is their high torque version, not their high rev version, because big hydroplanes are hard to push. And uh, they recommended that I use this motor. Two reasons. <laughs> let, let me go back. Big hydroplanes are hard to push, hard to move. It's not like moving a rigger, so let's get some torque. Number two, and perhaps most important, I'm a gas rookie. Don't know what I'm doing. Need a torquey motor. Okay, so here's how we've mounted things. We put the coil up on the front with some cute little rubbers. I didn't want to mount it on the sidewall. I just don't think that's clean. I want everything to come out in one fell swoop. We're using the what is it? WYK33 carburetor, which no one else in our club uses, so I have no help whatsoever trying to tune it. I'm going to see if I can figure it out. I put a floor mount, motor mounts in it. It just seems right to me. You know, this style of mount, this is the way that a rubber isolator mount is intended to be used in compression. They are not intended to be used in shear, hanging down the side. They tend to dangle and move a lot. This should be a much more solid fixture. Uh, there's another, there's a couple reasons why I like that. I don't want it moving and I want to use the thing the way it's meant to be used. I don't like big, heavy quarter inch runners all the way up and down the boat. And I don't want it to move much because this also, I'm the only guy trying this in the club because I'm an idiot. It has a solid flex drive in it. These are alignment sensitive. This is, trust me, this log is dead nuts aligned with the motor. These mounts in compression should help keep it that way. Only time will tell. Oh, we've had some movement. Oh, while we got this in the shot, let's take a look. This is Mark Evans. He's been miniaturized through 3D printing tricks. I've got him painted up. I haven't cleared him yet. Uh, you can see here's his dash panel. This piece will get angled up. Oh, look. All RC1. Bill Brandt provides uh, all of these parts, as well as awesome advice for anything you need to know about racing scale hydroplanes. Gassers, electrics, tent scale, nitro, anything. Call Bill. I'm sorry, that's a shameless plug. All RC1. Uh, he responds really quickly to messages here too, and you get the owner, you get Bill when you call here. Just do it. it, it'll save you a lot of trouble. I get questions all the time on where to buy things and what to buy and all that. Call Bill, he'll hook you up. Okay, so solid front canard here. I'll show you how this thing attaches. Here's our adjustable wing. I have a super lightweight uh, attachment method on that. If you've seen my Stro Light Tour You've seen this setup. All I did was scale everything up to operate in gas scale. What else can I tell you about the interior? It's gutted as much as possible. Shortly, you and I are gonna weigh this thing together and we're gonna see where we wound up. Okay, you wanna see how I clip this down? I like, you know, these big solid clips so that this doesn't blow off. <laughs> no, that's too heavy. That's how this works. There's nothing there. How does that work? You can't even see it. Radio box tape. That's how I hold the back on. I don't want magnets. I don't want clips. I don't want nothing. The cowling lays on it right here. This thing weighs basically nothing. Tiny bit of pore foam 
on it, floats it, that floats my boat, and we're good. I'm using, I went full quick draw. This is their hot pipe, their flex coupler. By the way, this blows oil everywhere when I fire the thing up, partly because I had a massive amount of oil in the motor, uh, and uh, partly because that's just the way these things are, especially when you don't have it tuned quite right. And I have it set super duper fat. Again, I am only guessing, but that's what I've done. Uh, throttle setup. I should have powered it up so you can see. I'm using a little tiny servo down here, laying on the floor, and just a short piece of rod. Okay? I've seen goofy bell cranks here, and long rods, and servos, and another rod with more connectors, and man, I just don't dig it, dude. It's too heavy, it's too many moving parts, don't like it. Here we got a straight shot. I'll try to get you a better look at it. Let's take a look. See. Can we see it down there? Kind of, sort of. It's a little Savox. Where should I get one of those if I want one? Oh yeah, call Bill. Uh, for the steering, I also have a Savox. I'm not going to tell you where to buy it. I think you can figure that out. You'll see on there that it's waterproof. This one is waterproof too. Good thing, because they're not in a radio box. Uh, here's how you really dig it. Up underneath here is the battery. Up underneath here is the receiver. It is a uh, Sanwa waterproof uh, receiver. See all that orange peel? You guys with your fancy paint jobs where they're just glassy smooth makes me crazy. I know I could buff this out, but I ain't gonna do it. Dude, this is a race boat. Come race with us, you'll see. It's not that we're cruel, it's not that we're mean, it's not that we don't run into each other on purpose, but we have dozens of race boats and everybody wants to win and everybody is fast. Especially that guy. Just kidding. Okay, what else you want to see in here? In a minute, hang in there. We're going to weigh this thing. Uh, electric start. Why? Simplicity. And I'm an old guy. I don't want to say... Burp, burp, burp. I've seen guys suffering, uh, yanking on the doggone uh, uh, pole starts. Plus, they're heavy. Uh, you got all this cable. You got this big contraption up here. And you got this big, heavy plastic handle. I can't do it. I just can't do it. So anyway, electric start. And it goes... Burp, and it's running. It is awesome. Uh, I do sacrifice some weight here. These are magnets. These are uh, one half by one inch magnets. There's two screws. You can't tell. There's a piece of G10 laying on top. They're so powerful that I lay a little piece of G10 on top of the magnets in the boat so that when I snap the cowling down on there, it'll, it'll release easier because otherwise you, it takes a crane and a couple of, couple of big guys to yank the cowling off of the thing. You'll see in a second here how that mounts. It works really, really good. Magnets are kind of heavy. It's kind of a bummer. Um, I sacrificed there because it is super duper slick. All right, here's what we're going to do. Let's, uh, hey, you guys want to see the bottom? Well, let's put the cowling on first, and then we'll flip it over. We'll put a little dab of tape on here so that this doesn't flop open when I flip it over. But uh, So here's our cowling. By the way, you want to make a cowling? Because don't call me. I won't make this for you. I have the mold because I made the mold. I made a plug, made the mold, made the cowling. Uh, it's very, very light. It's got a bunch of pour foam in it here at the back. The front has foam where the uh, pin mounts it to the front. Okay, not very much foam there. Lots of foam here. When it pops off, if when, I want it to float like this because I want to tear the back off of it. Why? Because I don't want to put a new windshield in it and I want to be able to put the remnant of it back on the boat and go finish the race, right? So if it falls in the water, I want it to float tail end up. If somebody hits it, they can tear the back off, and that's that. I wasn't kidding. Mark drove it. That says so right there. It must be true. Okay, so here's how it works. I'm going to try to do this while I'm watching through the screen. Doing it one hand, and bam, done. It's on. Snaps down into place. Super light. Fits like a champ. I'm cheating with all these holes, right? Nope. Real boat had them. Big giant hole in the back. Holes all down the top. Holes in the front. Should get a lot of airflow and hopefully won't be overheating that pipe and uh, we should be able to feed the carb real well with all that air. Okay, so I think that's it for the moment. Oh, wait. Let's take a look here. You might as well see it all. Ever mess with those solid flex drives? It's actually pretty slick. I mean, I think it's going to work out really, really well. You have a small hole in the strut here. The strut they sent me was too tall. I don't, oh man, I run a real low profile boat. 
Uh, my prop is not deep at all. I'm hoping it stays that way on this boat. We'll find out. But so anyway, I just copied what they'd done and just pushed some bushings into another Speedmaster strut. The, come on, focus. Okay, it's focusing. There we go, got it. Solid flex drive inserts into the strut. Only up to a certain line. Yeah, and you have to be really, really careful that the uh, stuffing tube doesn't slide too far up in or it'll actually hit the bushing under here. So we want to be careful with that. Don't worry, we'll show you the bottom in just a minute. Just want to show you how we do this. We just got pipe out the back, a little bit of clearance there. And your basic Speedmaster stuff here in the back. Uh, tiny little screws. Just little balls here. How do we mount the wings? I do not recommend you do this, okay? Because I think this is going to break. I think the, the moment this thing gets tapped, or if I go over, I think these are going to break. But I wanted to try it. So what we have here is nothing but a carbon tube with a 256 ball end on, on this end. Okay. 256 ball end on this end. I stuck a tiny bit of thread in the ball itself and then glued it into the carbon tube. Okay, that's how we came up with this. Super duper light, much lighter than running a 440 full rod. Um, I like this type of mounting because what it'll do, this can pop off. If I was actually using a rod, which I've done on every other wing set I build, I do, this, I do them all like this. I use this ball, small headed screw, so that the plastic portion can pop off of the ball and leave the ball in the transom. Okay, so nothing back here breaks. This thing can tear off and it pops right off. Plus, it's real easy to service. These screws and those balls will stay on this. <laughs> Keep my balls in my boat forever. Uh, unless the transom gets ripped out, I'll never have these out again. In fact, they're glued in. Now, up here, and the reason, this is another reason why I say don't do this at home. I have it attached to the back, and you're all looking at that going, what in the heck are you doing? Well, this is the way the original boat was. They had a very square wing, and they had the wing struts attached. To the back and it just so happens they were attached right here where this white stripe is so uh, I just copied it I thought well what the heck let's try it I don't know if it's gonna work I got a feeling that the wing will break here if I go over and it gets hit hard one way or another I hope not we're gonna find out and I will keep you posted super light super slick I've seen you guys using your big uh, big giant aluminum bracket back here with screws with like eight screws holding it into the transom and all this hardware. Dude, that weighs as much as the whole back half of my boat. Don't do that. Come on. Come on. Just don't. I mean, if you're just building a model, great. But if you're building a race boat, don't do that. Okay. So very, very light. I have my own mold. Built my own mold for these. They're super duper thin, uh, lightweight fiberglass. Let's flip this thing over and I will show you the bottom of the boat. All right. Hang tight. Ta-da! Come on, that is sexy. <laughs> All right, here's the deal. It's narrow. Uh, this particular Stodiker design is narrower and smaller than most other Unlimiteds, uh, certainly of Unlimiteds at the time. Uh, so I have no idea how that's going to work out. It works out pretty well in the Nitro version. Uh, this uses a flat floor design. I stole this part of the design from ML Boatworks from Mike. Just thought, uh, why not? Let's do it. A couple of reasons there. Number one, okay, there's one reason. It's really easy. There's no break. You just run a flat floor, okay? If you're a lazy guy like me, you just want to go racing, that's what you do. And you know what? It works awesome. The strobe light is that way. The, well, the eliminator is that way. And they're fast. Uh, Sponson's uh, totally my own thing here. Uh, this is not uncommon in our club. A lot of guys run a fairly similar design. I have kind of a radius forward section here because I don't want it to react too terribly if the boat's way out of shape. Uh, tiny, tiny, tiny break. A very flat recovery right here. A solid break and then of course your regular ride pad here. Nothing different too much from the norm. Okay, I taper this area here. I see a lot of guys do that flat. Uh, I didn't like how that responded on the stro, so I've tapered that here. This is a, an RC Unlimited thing, I think. Now this monkey see, monkey do. Kirk Maupin started doing this, or this water channel is here. I don't know who did it first, Kirk Maupin or David Brandt. 
but they both kick my butt very regularly. The two probably fastest uh, or best, if you will, drivers in the club. Uh, the idea is that this channel area here will capture water and not let it spill and help you pop out of the water when you're from a troll. And we do trolling starts, we battle for lanes, and it's pretty violent uh, and super fun. So we have certain angles here. I have another video. If you look back on my build videos, I'll talk about the angles used. Okay. Here's our engine well. Again, as I say, I built a very low-profile boat. I think it's much, much lower than most gas boats out there, which meant I did have to drop the engine down, which hurt my feelings real bad. I did some milling work on the motor and so on to drop it uh, to, to make this as shallow as possible, but it still exists. Um, slotted mounts for the turn fin. It's my own turn fin, my own mount. Don't ask me to make them for you. You can't afford it. That, that's not, that's not nice. It, it's not that I, I want to overcharge you. It's just that it takes forever to make things nice, and I like things nice, and it's hard to charge somebody fair for that. So under here, we just use a little L-tab. You can see my favorite mounting system, a little bit of radio box tape. Strip a radio box tape across here, and that's all it takes. Gosh, look at that awful paintwork. That's all it takes to hold that canard in place. So, uh... Do away with your big heavy brackets and all your goofy stuff. Tape it on the bottom. Put a couple light little brackets under there. Slot them things and you are good to go. All right, I think that's it underneath. You know what we ought to do? We ought to weigh this thing. The uh, zip tie, by the way, this is a critical item. You need to make sure you do this. Nah, it's not true. This is just here. I figure I can hang it on that when we weigh it. And uh, let's go find out. Let's go find out what this thing weighs. All right, hang on. I'll be back again. I got a, I got a switch here. Okay, here we go. Gosh, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, hey. Dog's down again. Jackson, say hi to everybody. That's my boy. Okay, he's deaf. Now, he's 13 years old. Man, that dog's been through a lot. All right, I'm going to try to do this uh, solo, one-handed here. I do this all for you guys. All this suffering is strictly for you. Okay, zeroed out. How am I going to pull this off? Okay. Alright, gotcha. Alright. Have you ever dangled a 20 pound object out in front of you? Yeah, up. Come on, baby. We are in the air. Ugh. Boat is swinging, and it is in the 14.8 pound range. Woo! Set her down. Hang on, let me get her unhooked. Holy Toledo. Sorry. Uh, the way I, th that made it sound like it weighs 50 pounds. Ugh. But the truth is, it's just really hard to do that, hanging out in front of your body while you're holding a camera, or holding a phone, as it were. Okay, there you go. You got yourself a uh, less than 15 pound gas boat. And what that means is it may rip itself apart. It's scary as heck firing this thing up even on the bench. The motor just cackles and snorts and uh, scared the crap out of me. But uh, you know what? I'm gonna go run it. And then I'll come back and let you know how it did. With any luck at all, I'll have some great video for you. If it runs terrible, I'm not gonna show it to you. Hey, click like, come on, be a sport. I'm doing this for you. Just for you and for me because it stokes my ego. All right, give me a like, would you? Share the video with others. <laughs> That's all right. There you go.